Hi there, Tube. Musical Avery here. We're at the uh, Birdsville Airport where we left the uh, DA 62 before world flight. Since then, we have flown around the world and gotten ourselves a new 737. And also, I'll put out a vote onto the community part of the channel, uh, essentially asking which aeroplane you'd like to see me continue on with after, well, from this stream onwards, really. That vote included options for continuing on with a DA-62 or moving over to the Lancer Legacy and going back to the uh, Beechcraft Bonanza, the VTAL, or over to the Piper Comanche. And as it happens, the Piper Comanche seems to have come out in first place. So we're going to move over to the Piper Comanche now. And Kira from Toilet Inspector, how you doing? Just going to walk out over onto the field and we'll pick up our new aeroplane. And call it to you. Uh, very hot, very dry out here in Queensland. There have been some uh, large fires in the south of Queensland and also the north of New South Wales, just north of Sydney. Parts of it in Sydney as well. Uh, there's a fairly large bushfire in the Sydney suburb of Taramara and a smaller one in the National Park south of Loftus uh, in the Sutherland Shire. Gala went well. Had some fun. Mostly avoided dancing. Mostly. <laughs> the girls got into their dancing. I think we had about mm, maybe 15 to 20 girls up on the dance floor quite often. And about one or two guys that I suspect were dancing with each other. The rest of us bearded men were uh, watching from the sides. Uh, food was alright. Small portions, you know, restaurant food is alright. And uh, yeah, had a good chat. Good time. I barely drank, but I did have one bubbly, so not exactly smashed. I'm sure other people did. I'm a rather low-key kind of guy when it comes to my alcohol. But I had fun, and uh, yeah. Uh, I was driving that night as well, so had to get the ladies home nice and safe, which we did. Anyhow, we're here to fly this little aeroplane from Birdsville to places even more remote. Uh, Delta Oscar Echo, the uh, Piper Comanche. Very strange aeroplane, this one. I think it's uh, pretty old as well. Uh, we're talking 1960s, early 1960s for this aircraft, um, based on the technology we find in the cockpit here, which is not much at all. Apart from our add-on GPS, which is mandatory due to uh, the requirement for ADS-B out. You can see the control lock is a bungee cord. And uh, that also blocks the flaps in the up position. I did not hear about the water bomber helo that went down. That's uh, unfortunate. Where was that? New South Wales or QLD? Cool. We have a um, walk around to do. Master switch goes on. We're going to drop the flaps. Mixture and throttle.
kill breaks the set. Good to hear the pilot is safe. Thanks for that, Lauren. I'll take a look at that. When we're airborne, yeah, people setting fires on purpose is really annoying. Unfortunately, a lot of the time, the people that set fires on purpose are juvenile. So, you're like talking about 15, 16 year olds. It's hard to prosecute that. Not the aeroplane. That's not a camera, even though it looks like one. That's just a light. Nine year old, yeah. <laughs> Lighting a fire with a blowtorch. Great. Well, we're out past the bush in the desert for this flight, so far west Queensland. Checking in there, that's all good. There's nothing in the outer tanks today, won't need it. Tie downs off, the uh, chocks are off. Plenty of fuel in the main tank though. Under here we can see it's all fuel and not a, none of it's water. It's also that nice light blue colour, not red. So I got Avgas in there. Three good propeller blades. And there's no debris inside. Hi there, Aaron. Yeah, not doing too bad. Oh, that's very nice looking oil. And clearly about was that nine. Three, six, nine, twelve. Yeah, okay. That's ten quarts of oil. So let's say about that in the side here. 20 below 10, all capacity 12. Cool, we're good. Great. Yeah, having guys with working tools, starting fires accidentally, that's a thing that happened. That, uh, that's pretty much how the um, Victorian fire started in 2209. Good, another empty fuel tank. Johannesburg, that's a long flight. The uh, static port's near the tail over here, right there. It's pretty uh, far back on the aeroplane. Tie down here's off. Locked that, and we'll jump back in. Work today was much easier than yesterday. Yesterday we had the fires happening and we are having to evacuate. Well, I'm sure that our um, technicians weren't going to evacuated areas like Bandina and Wollongong. They didn't end up actually having fires down there, fortunately, but um, some of those towns were under evacuation orders, so we could actually send our text down there. That was fun. Ready, all that's ready. Let's run a checklist. Doo -doo -doo. Exterior inspection is completed. Passenger briefing, all right. So we're flying a Papa Comanche. Pretty quick aircraft today. Only have one door. Uh, this is a fairly old aircraft in the 1960s vein. Down here we have a cigarette lighter. We will not be using that on board today. <laughs> yep, 
If we do need to leave the aircraft for any reason, we'll go out the uh, one door that we have on the right. My suggestion is you'll need to walk towards the rear of the aircraft to get off the wing. Don't run forward, you will fall over. So back to the rear of the aeroplane to get off the wing and continue rearwards, we'll meet at the tail of the aeroplane. Uh, suggested not to walk in front of the aeroplane while the engine is on because there's a big spinny thing out front. I've lived in Melbourne since 2006. And I bought my house in 2007. That's been a while. Alrighty, so uh, headsets on because the engine's quite loud when it's running. And I'll turn on the intercom so we can hear each other through our headsets. Let's go. Master switch goes on. Gonna click the primer a couple of times. Here's a hilarious thing, that's the landing gear switch, very tiny switch right next to the throttle. And there's a extremely fuel switch that is almost identical to it right near it. Okay, circuit lights are in. Rotating beacon and the strobe. Clear prop. Alrighty, we're going to be using the old GPS today because I can't be bothered doing dead reckoning. So I'll chuck in the flight plan YBDV and then uh, YBIE and BOU. There it is, Birdsville, Bedowry, and Billy. Uh, Billy, what's it? <laughs> Bulia. So Bedowry and uh, Bulia. So coming out of Birdsville, we want to chuck in our um, CTAF. One twenty six point seven. And I'll chuck in the Uticom as well on COM two. Two point eight set. Uh, the Baku X scenery is not a default scenery. It has many more runways than default. Uh, the demo scenery should mean that you have the proper airport layout, but the textures will be pretty average. Bull yeah. <laughs> but remember to actually activate this scenery. You can't just double click the execute button and let it run. You then have to go into the simulator and do the whole finding the scenery through world 
scenery library, click it on add area, find it, then click activate and all that kind of stuff. So if you haven't done that second bit inside the sim, you will have default scenery. Not because it's a demo, but because you haven't actually added it to the, yeah, to the flight sim. Right, we're in a pipe of choking. We do need to swap our uh, tank server every once in a while. These are really tanks are off, main tanks are in. Um, maybe I'll do another one for another country, but probably not in this simulator. Probably by the time we get to Microsoft 2020 and we have full proper scene, like uh, photographic realistic scenery of the entire world, essentially. Um, I'll probably do a second lap of Australia and then New Zealand sounds like a good idea. Alright, there we go. Just going to run a checklist before we run off. Taxi checklist. Avionics Master is on. Radios are set. Transponders on standby. In fact, we can probably just tuck them on now. It's all good. Tour coordinator is on. Shown with a blue light next to it. Uh, transponder, yeah. Flaps retracted. Primer in and locked. Done. And landing gear is green. Our throttle, brakes, and steering. I'll do a steering check while we move out and a flight instrument check. We we'll do need to check on this because I haven't moved the aeroplane yet. Uh, 23. 23. How do I change that? Ah, that's how I change that. Cool. It is 23? Yes, it is. Cool. Alright, we can uh, start moving and we'll have a chat to the guys on the CTAF if there are any. Traffic Birdsville, a Delta Oscar Echo is a uh, Piper Cherokee. Taxiing at Birdsville, uh, tracking to uh, Badiri. Which runway do we want? Where's the uh, winds from the north? Okay, runway 32. That's the runway that I really like because it's close. Let's go. Parking brake is out. Yep, the steering is working. I'll lean it out a little. We'll turn up towards the runway and we'll do the run ups over there. in yet. Cool. It's all very far. Hi there, Dan. How you doing? RPM, gonna chuck in the uh, brake. Yeah, 
and the runner. Parking brake is set, seatbelts are secure, doors closed, and lock controls first. Controls free and correct. Mixture fully rich. Fuel selected to the fullest. Which one is that? Yeah, they're both about the same. We'll leave it where it is. Yep, happy with them. Oil pressure and temperature. Green, green, and green. And we'll go up to full power, which is uh, 18. Switch across. Yep, it's only about maybe 70 RPM drop. Uh, we do actually have a carburetor heat. Drop that out. That's working, about 100. And we'll do the props. cycle it three times lean for altitude right about there cool get some lights on. Pumps on for the takeoff, looking for a thousand RPM. And for takeoff. Pumps are on, fuel selector full of tank, carburetor heat is off, flaps are set up. Our trim is neutral in the takeoff range. Heading selector is set, and we heading uh, three six zero. Jeez, it. What is the actual heading here? Three two zero. All right. Heading set for takeoff. Transponder is in alt. Engine gauge is normal. Strobe light is on. And emergency procedures review. All right, we're taking off on run 832, and uh, we'll be taking off with about uh, 100, uh, not 100, sorry, 90 knots. No flap. Accelerating to 112 knots. That's our maneuvering speed. Uh, once we're established in the climb, we'll cons uh, consider how much runway is remaining before we take the uh, landing gear up. If we do need to land on the remainder of the runway after an engine failure or similar, uh, we will actually proceed to land on the runway after takeoff if we need to, and there is a bit of overrun there in the sand. Assuming so everything else runs well, we can always do a uh, comeback on uh, any runway. It's to be a fire out there, the wind's not too difficult. Uh, flight to Baduri today is 93 nautical miles. And it's 89 nautical miles to Bulia, which is our final destination for today. And I think that's about all we need to review. As I've said, we'll meet at the tail if we do need to get out of the aeroplane. Yeah, 
if there's no further questions, we'll uh, go ahead and take off. Traffic, Burnsville, Delta Oscar Echo entering a runway 32, uh, departure right hand crosswind. Traffic, Burnsville. Brakes released. on let's go Yeah, coming up. Quick aircraft, this one, just to, it just feels very sprightly on the controls compared to the Piper Archer or Cherokee. Okay, prop RPM down to down there. This has got the same kind of uh, autopilot as the Piper Archer does, which is it can't climb or descend on its own, it can only maintain an altitude. We'll leave it on, uh, apart from the fuel pump. Get a message.
go off into the Australian outback desert. Great sandy, really. It's going to go on the CDI and get us on uh, GPS mode. There it is. Climb as high as we want it today. It's kind of really weird having the GPS on the left hand side of the pilot position. It's just uh, it's a strange place to put it. You need to take your hand off the yoke. You need to swap hands all the time. Like you need to use the left hand on your radios and then have to swap back to the right hand for the other stuff, like your throttles. You can either navigate and communicate or you can, you know. Adjust your throttle. Can't do both. the high track, that'll track the uh, GPS position down to Baduri. I might just push the nose a little forward and climb it about a thousand a minute. Like that's 6,500, I only want to go another thousand feet anyway. miles to go. We have 997, how you doing? We've got the autopilot running a uh, altitude now. It is requesting down trim. <laughs> there we go. Up trim. Yeah, it should stabilize about there. Yeah, not doing too bad myself. Haven't been affected by any of the New South Wales fires. Are you more Victoria? centric at the moment. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'll leave that out. Ah, it's accelerating well. Yeah, there's no turbulence around. We can probably bust the yellow a little bit. 100 and what's that, 55 knots odd? Not bad for a, a single. Let's 
Simulation GP, g'day. Let's go adjust the uh, mixture a little bit. This is a bit of a weird collection of set of uh, levers. You've got the mixer here on the left side of the throttle. Prop control, so it's kind of a bit backwards compared to most airplanes. Mixture throttle prop instead of throttle mixture prop. Cabra heat. Primer, there's a lighter there, that's a cigarette lighter, and there's a little cigarette ashtray here. How about that? Okay, Boomer. Ram them uh, cupboard over there to chuck stuff in. Another ashtray on the outside, just in case your passengers want to smoke on the plane. Red light. Some random lights here that you can aim around the place. Find one of these, I'll probably replace that with a camera. <laughs> Rossi. And Nick, how you doing? Alrighty, our ground speed must be pretty high. 178 knots of ground speed. That's pretty good. Good clip for an old single. much out here but desert is there. Let's have a look at our chart. So I've left Birdsville, I'm tracking on a heading of uh, 357, 50, uh, so again 93 nautical miles past Glengyle up to Baduri, out back Queensland.
We are 1,600 kilometres away from Brisbane. Or will be when we get there. Uh, Georgina River. So when the Georgina River experiences severe floods, the town can be cut off by road for months at a time. The Baduri Camel Races are held annually in July. Baduri State School is a government primary school, only primary school, that's uh, up to age of about 11 or 12. And the uh, school had an enrollment of eight students in 2017. Rex Airlines flies to Baduri Airport in the good old Saab SF340. Although the township's relatively far away enough, uh, the council area of Baduri uh, borders Northern Territory. A river steak sounds good to me. Good choice. Mungathiri National Park will be just off to our left hand side of it. Not sure if that's it there or if it's just over the horizon, but it's probably out there within range. Uh, that particular national park is essentially the Simpson Desert. So the Simpson Desert features sand dunes, which can be about 50 metres in height, roughly one kilometre apart. Most of the dunes are between 10 and 35 metres in height. And the longest sand ridge is 200 kilometres in length. One of the most prominent dunes is the Big Red Sand Dune, about 35k west of uh, Birdsville. Visitors are encouraged to visit from April to October to avoid the extreme daytime temperatures and to travel in a two vehicle party at least and with long distance communications equipment. There are no roads in the park but there is a main track called the QIA line. Winter mornings can be freezing while the summer temperatures can be hot as 50 degrees Celsius.
this is uh, probably the most remote we've been on the tour so far. This is bona fide proper desert. Heading down shortly. Let's see, we're at uh, seven. I don't want to do math in my head. 7,000 feet. Uh, what's the altitude at the Dury? Seven is cool. Three hundred feet. It's not too bad. So I need to lose about seven thousand to enter the circuit. Seven times three. Twenty-one. Now I'll call it twenty-five miles out. To 180 miles uh, knots at the moment. So a thousand a minute. Get out there. Done a couple of modifications on the aeroplane. So we've got airspeed in knots on the outer ring and uh, miles per hour on the inner ring. When you get it default. Uh, it'll be opposite to that, so I'll have miles per hour on the out outer ring and knots on the inner. But uh, we've shown a speed of about 172 miles per hour, which is 150 knots square. Yeah, we're descending at about 10 miles or so. There is Elijah. Yeah, VNAV calculation in the GTM. That said, whatever. A calculator also works. Three times table. Why the five times table? Might do the VNAV in the GTM for the next leg. It's under utilities, isn't it? There it is. Of course, I've got no active constraints at the moment because there's nothing there. I guess you could put that in, say, what? Uh, 1,300 feet? It's 700 feet, isn't it? It's a three degree glide path. The BS target's about right, isn't it? Five minutes, top of the cent. Yeah, it wants to throw us a three degree glide path, which is a bit steeper than I was going to go. I was going to go for about a, what, 1,000 foot per minute descent. A little bit easier on the ears since we're not, you know, Pressurize or anything. Some of those sand dunes. Look at that. There's nothing out there, man. And we're drawing up both tanks pretty well. Take that two degree glide path down. That's reasonable. 
Now, one thing you've got to realise about this aeroplane is it doesn't have a auto part that can manage a descent. So, one option is to remove the altitude component and we'll let the aeroplane steer itself, or we can just take the entire auto part out. I'll start off with the altitude component only. So, we click on the auto pilot altitude hold, that's gone and I'm just pushing forward on the oak to give us some descent rate. Going to reduce the throttle as well. And I'll start to go slightly rich. Ever so slightly rich of peak because we're descending into it. And eventually we'll descend through it to a slightly leading peak and then we'll reach it up again. Put the manifold pressure down to 15. Let's run a check. Descent, propellers on cruise RPM, that's still there, about 224, <laughs> that's fine. Next to coming up slightly rich. Yeah, 15, the manifold pressure is about right. And we'll enrich that thing in descent. Full landing checklist. I'll just get through some of it now. Seat backs are upright, seat belts are on. And we'll leave the rest for the gums. Yeah, the map's fine. In fact, the map should zoom in on the airport as we get close to it. It'll be fine. Besides, we're not really using the map. Once we've got the runway in sight, we'll just uh, run a visual circuit. Do a full circuit. And we're coming up towards, uh, what, 15 miles out? Make a broadcast then. Uh, what's our estimate? 56, current time 50, 6 minutes out. Manifold pressure, yep, that's right. 15, that's exactly where I want it. Is between the range 15 to 17 manifold pressure and we're sitting at 16 right now. I'll just leave it there for most of the descent until we've decided to uh, level off. Yeah, 
Yeah, we'll make the broadcast. Bill Wheeler traffic, uh, Delta Oscar Echoes, a uh, Piper Comanche inbound from the south, Birdsville. They're at uh, passing 4,000 feet on descent and we'll enter uh, Bill Wheeler uh, pattern. Uh, expecting to enter pattern at time 5 6. Traffic Bill Wheeler. It's either 3 2 or 1 4, probably going to be 3 2, same as um, Birdsville was. Can't imagine the weather being that significantly different. So uh, the intention, I think, will be to fly straight up the dead site and then turn into the left hand. Hi there, Jack, how you doing? Yeah, that uh, manifold pressure just starts to increase a little bit. There's that. Get my um, levers mixed up again. 16. Let's level off a little now. Take the airplane. That's the runway heading. Pretty sure I've got the town in, in sight. Uh, there's the runway, got it. Kind of on a weird base road at the moment, if we wanted to. I thought I'd do. 1,600, we'll lose another 1,000 feet. James Wilson, indeed. I've never been to Birdsville myself, but it looks like a pretty cool place to uh, visit, especially with that pub right across the road there. Not sure about this Biloela place. Barely read up about it. There's a cloud. My gosh, how'd that happen? Traffic Biloela, Delta Oscar Echo is uh, crossing the satellite of runway 32. We'll uh, join from the dead side and uh, announce our downwind. Traffic Biloela. Long Reach. Long Reach would be pretty cool as well, especially with the Aviation Museum. <laughs> Bakery with camel. <laughs> Great. They do the camel races here, don't they? altitude that we want and we'll continue slowing down 
Then we go to full mixture rich. Bill of traffic, uh, Delta Oscar Echo is on the dead side of the field and will join from the crosswind. Traffic, Baduri. There's that river that floods and there's that tiny itty bitty town. The town's much smaller than the airport. <laughs> the airport's actually a full proper runway and then there's a tiny town which is about I'd say about maybe a quarter of the length of the runway. It's a good two blocks of township. I guess it's four blocks across and maybe six deep. Maintain the altitude. Okay, checklisters will be extending the landing gear on the downwind uh, with all the flap uh, coming out through the uh, base. And our final approach speed is 70 knots. 75. Fuel would cost a bomb there. Yep, I can see that. Chuck Baduri, uh, Delta Oscar Echo, turning uh, across the end of runway 32. Where do you reckon the uh, cheapest fuel would be? Clon Curry or Mount Isa? I'm thinking Mount Isa. I can tell you where it won't be. The monument. <laughs> if they even have fuel there. Brisbane. Clearly. Right. We're not going back to Brisbane. We've got a... Um, 370 mile journey somewhere in our future between uh, Richmond and uh, Townsville. Chuck Maduri, Delta Oscar Echo turning downwind on way 32. 15 on the manifold. And uh, gear extension is 130 knots. We're showing 100 knots. Gear coming down. Gear green light. With 17 on the manifold. RPM all the way. Okay, brakes are released. Other carriage is down. Mixture fully rich. Uh, fuel set to both, and we're showing uh, just under 20 gallons each tank. Seats and houses are secure. Checklist complete. Uh, it tends to be gas power because I have a lot of natural gas that gets piped down. So a lot of them run off natural gas. There would be some solar power, but that, that's only relatively recent.
<laughs> Five loaf of camels. All right. Do a full precautionary search and landing. Looks clear. I doubt there'd even be many uh, kangaroos out here. It's just, um, yeah. Anyway, we'll start our uh, base turn soon. <laughs> Willy Willy's on. Intriguing. Uh, not very windy out here today, so Willy Willy should be to a minimum. When he any luck, I think the uh, yeah the wind was reported at about nine nine knots. It was less than ten. Anyway. Traffic Billowila. Uh, Delta Oscar Echo is turning a base runway three two. Flaps in. Two stages. Dust devils all over the place? Okay, pretty windy. Not sure about that here. But I'll keep the speed up. Traffic Bill Wheeler. Del Sosco Echo, a final runway 3 sir. There goes the rest of the flap. Oh, yes, that one cloud. Got to watch out for that. Seventy-five, right where I want it. Solve those right about there. Sounding good. Applying for the Queensland cops. Don't you need to be like literally part of the mafia for that? <laughs> so I need to take bribes off them. Traffic Billowila, uh, Del Swasco Echo, backtracking Runway 32. Seven out of ten. Yeah, right. Cool. Wasn't the smoothest I've ever done. I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah. Gate number one. Unless there's another airplane on it already, in which case. I 
do like that ridge line. That's pretty cool. Especially with the trees in it. Smooth enough. We got there. Wasn't the smoothest in the world. A little bit of a bounce. Well, didn't actually bounce, it just kind of settled a little bit. Bit rocky. This is not really Orbex, it's uh, the Orbex FTX Scenery for Australia version 2. And it is some freeware scenery which you said. Uh, I'm thinking it's in the links below. Uh, but it's from. Uh, you should be able to find it on absim.com. The wind is different to what I expected. Alright. Windsocker showing appreciation. Windsock has shown that the wind here is the opposite to what it was in uh, Birdsville. Could have looked at it a bit closer. Oh well. We'll know for the departure. Diddles, that's funny. Yes, and I'll just go around here. Traffic Billa Wheeler, Delta Oscar Echo, vacated runway 32. Bonanza? Thanks for that, Sean. Glad someone appreciated the old NGX flight. Take that flat up as well. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's uh, drop the avionics. Bye bye, avionics. And we'll jump on out and have a look around the uh, airport here. Right up the top there and open the door. Let's meet at the tail of the aeroplane. Oh, he's doing the spinny thing. How do I stop that again? This. Yep.
reasonable size aeroplane. It's quite short actually compared to a Cessna 172 even. Here's a uh, straight tail Bonanza. Someone's ute. Yeah, this guy is about mm, 5 foot 11-ish in height. And he is in the scale, yeah. <clears throat> I say he's about 5 foot 11 because he's about two, in, 2 to 3 inches shorter than I am. And my head does not fit under a Cessna 172 wing. Without bending it. This guy can fit under a Cessna 172 wing. With room to spare. I'm six foot two, 185 centimeters roughly. So he's a good mm, eight centimeters shorter than me. So literally nothing happening out here at the airfield. <laughs> Random piece of gate. Okay. Feels like that's in the wrong place. Should be inside. Yeah. It does look rather depressing, and I can imagine the sound effect being of flies buzzing around. <laughs> Blow flies. Falcon Utes? No. Not going to be uh, Toyotas or uh, Holdens. Don't get their Fords out here, man. Little airports like this often have a little waiting room inside the cover. Down here a bit. At least a toilet. Maybe a place to do a, get a cup of coffee. Even if it's self-service. Oh, there we are. Inside the model. Well, there's the toilets over there. And the single door would probably just be the random office. No one in it. The only way to get uh, any kind of attendant out here is probably to call them on the telephone. And you get off the uh, thing here. Yep, you bring them on the phone. Ah, uh, there we are. The ARO, the uh, airport, whatever, res residential officer. Give him a call on the mobile phone, he'll drive drive down from town, wherever he's doing. Uh, yeah, I've seen invisible walls in flight sim. That's why I have crash detection off. So we don't, you know, randomly die. Collision detection rather than crash. Well, of course, if we slap the airplane down on the runway at a thousand miles, a uh, thousand foot per minute, that would crash the airplane. Not that it'd be spectacular, it'd just be, you know, you have crashed. Reset back to Birdsville. Let's get out of here.
Nothing happening. Okay, from Baduri up to Bulia. What's happening in Bulia? Bulia Shire Council. Town of 600 people. Cool. There's some UFOs up there called the Min Min Lights. Great place to spend a night. Let's get going. Master Switch is on. Aircraft is warm. I'm just going to um, crack the throttle a little bit. Everything else is ready. Park and brake is set. And we'll start it up. Clear prop. Not that anyone's at the airfield. Thousand RPM. We're going direct YBOU. Bulia 542, we want to uh, cross there at uh, 2000. Let's close this up. One twenty six point seven is set. 328 is set. It's got to lean off the mixer a little. Probably about there. Flaps are up. Let's run a quick checklist. Do do do. Avionics Master is on, radios are set, transponder standby. And you know we're out in the middle of nowhere, so standby means let's just go straight on. Uh, flaps are attracted, primer is in and locked, didn't use it. Landing gear is green, parking brake is on, and we'll talk about taxing out later. Run up, I'll do those, and before takeoff, cool. Right, you got your uh, seat belts and stuff on. <laughs> probably the first out of town of the scene for a while. Probably they're all in bed in their houses. They get, oh yeah, that's right. We've got an airfield. I forgot about that. Alrighty, let's uh, move on out. Runway's just over there. That's a threshold to the runway. Okay. And I'm going to use the opposite runway, 1 4, because the sock is planted straight in the opposite direction. What's the actual wind doing? It's 15 knots. It's not, not bad at all. Traffic Bullier. Delta Oscar Echo is a uh, Piper Comanche. We'll be answering the backtrack runway 14 departure left downward. Traffic Billion. Lights on. Mm -hmm. 
Let's make sure it's a left downward and not a right one. Not bad, with 15 mi minute prior notice they can uh, have standby available on a ground power. Pretty cool. Nope, nothing about the aerodrome, so it's just going to be a standard left hand circuit. That's very true. Come to a town like this, in the middle of nowhere, and you find that some person that lives here is born in Tibet or something. Yeah. Oh, that's that's very interesting. How did you get into, you know, Baduri? <laughs> we have had some uh, immigrant families from little towns out here. Um, that our immigration minister has ordered to leave. Uh, one of them from Sri Lanka, I believe. So yeah, can't remember what town that was from, but it was somewhere out here. I'll look them up. It's the town we're going to. Biloela, next town up. We're in Baduri, and we're... No, that's Bulia. That's the one next week. So next week we're going up to from Baduri <coughs> to Bulia and Biloela. So yeah, next town up from the one that we're landing at next. Uh, there's a Sri Lankan family who had re resettled into Biloela and they're getting um, well they've gone to the Supreme Court of Australia to get rights to stay in Australia. They're Tamils, they don't want to get back to uh, Sri Lanka and get, you know, killed. <laughs> Better leave before they find the toilet is blocked. Truck Baduri, uh, Delta Oscar Echo, lining up runway one Ford, uh, left hand downwind departure, traffic Baduri. Okay, mixture is fully rich, everything's full forward, all the lights are on. And we are ready to roll. Let's do it. hanging for a couple of hundred feet on the way up and that's all we need gear up gear orange lights bye bye Baduri 
Once again, we'll continue straight ahead so we don't fly over the middle of the town in the turn, and then we'll uh, turn once we pass them. <laughs> yep. Everything's up, and we can reduce our RPM down to something more reasonable, like 2400. There's a tiny town. Bittery traffic, uh, Delta Moscow Echo turning. Uh, Right, uh, left downwind, runway 14, uh, climbing through 2,000 feet, traffic with error. What heading do we need? Zero one zero. Set. back what's our altitude coming out of 3000 yeah about there Checklist enough for the climb, reducing to 1000 RPM. Best angle to climb, best rate of climb is 105, and rate of climb will be 120, and uh, that's some miles per hour. Extra leaning on the ascent. Let's do that now. That's 5000. pressure up to about 25. That's as much as we can get out of it now. Bullia 398. I'll chuck it on there.
got it. D da 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 D D D da 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 Yep, that's it. B O U. You can see that written on the the map there. N D B three ninety eight. Dash dot dot dot. Dash, 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 dot, dot, dash. And we're coming up to our cruise altitude pretty quick. Alan Jones. So that means the deportation of immigrants. Okay, well that's pretty strange. Alan Jones, the very conservative commentator, is championing their cause, then that's pretty unusual. Alright, let's get our uh, mixture sorted out. So we're going to uh, lean it out to uh, just underneath the peak EGT. Uh, Bepino 65, how you doing? We are very far from France. We're kind of on the edge of the Simpson Desert, tracking up to Bilawila. Julia, sorry. He's leaving Badawi now. Up to Bulia. The edge of the Simpson Desert. Now the township of Bulia has a population of 600 across the entire 61,000 square kilometers of the uh, gazetted council area. The area is known for its sightings of the Min Min Light, which is a mysterious shimmering of lights that appear at night. The phenomena is known as Fata Morgana, which is a complex form of superior mirage which is seen in a narrow band right above the horizon. It's an optical phenomenon occurring because rays of light are bent when they pass through air layers of different temperatures and a steep thermal inversion where the atmospheric data is formed. Oh, we get that in radio navigation, uh, radio broadcasting as well. So it's essentially a visit a visible uh, version of radio ducting. Cool. So Billy's known for its uh, extreme uh, ducting to the point that the vision is affected. That can be up to 14 and just gonna stay there all day. Yeah, it's get, moving on. Moving on up. Uh, 
That's Lena Peak. We'll push it back up again. That's Peak itself, and I just want a little bit extra. Now, this is one of the old uh, Lycoming engines, so. A genuine 1965 Lycoming engine is uh, lean to just slightly richer peak. I know there are some other air aircraft engines that lean at slightly lean of peak, especially on the SR22, but not on these. Okay, so Bullier is in the Channel Country with all the water courses in the area are uh, part of the lake air drainage basin. So most of the rivers don't actually go out to the ocean, they go out to the middle of Australia and then dry up. The township of Bullier lies on the Burke River, which is uh, the same Burke from Burke and Wool's expedition who left Melbourne and then died out in the middle of. Tennant Creek or whatever, which we'll pass on our journey, not for some time. Alright, so the main industry in Bullia is beef cattle. When it does rain heavily, the Mitchell grass plains respond very well and result in the channel country around Bullia being among some of the uh, finest beef producing country in Australia. How about that? For a, uh, essentially a desert down here, give it a bit of water and you have a bunch of grass on a very flat plain. Again, a very tiny town, six roads running east-west and five roads running north-south. Slightly bigger than Baduri. Okay, climate is very hot and dry with an average of 200 days a year over 30 degrees. And the rainfall is very erratic. As low as less than one inch for an entire year. And sometimes two inches and then you get a monsoon occasionally and push it up to like 400 inches. <laughs> okay, that's a bit extreme. Yeah, so you get massive floods and then massive droughts as well. Great stuff. Bulgia hosts the Camel Sands Desert Races, the longest camel race in Australia. Fifty-two miles out. We'll descend again at twenty-five. So Inspector, absolutely agree. One of the things that I found when I was living in Sydney, I'd get massive hay fever every spring. Down in Melbourne, I barely get it at all. It's 
just something that happens. And I go, oh, I must have gotten over my hay fever. And then I visit Sydney. And it's like, no, no, I haven't. I've, I've definitely got hay fever. Our utilities for the V now to the old two degree path. And there's our Todd. for the moment. Fifteen gallon fuel I guess, man Isa. And looking at this uh, township's only got a primary school again, so that's uh, students up to about twelve years of age. We'll go to school in Dulia, and the school has an enrolment of 27 students. After those 27 students have to go to high school, their nearest high school is in Mount Isa, which is, well, if you want to drive to Mount Isa, it'll take you about 10 hours, maybe more. Let's see, Dulia to Mount Isa. Five hours. All right. That's right because we've got a 130 uh, kilometer hour zones up here. So yeah, take you a bit of time to get to school. Probably not a daily commute affair. Uh, so they usually go to boarding school. I'd imagine up there. High school over the internet, but I do have school of the year. That's an option. It's essentially uh, homeschool, but with the teacher. But if you want to get, you know, a little bit of socialization going on, off to Mount Isa for you. Probably help a lot if your uh, if your parent owned an aeroplane. Even at Cessna 172, it'd take two hours to get there, and probably another hour and a half to get back. A four or five hour journey with the uh, ground time. <laughs> Wikipedia high, funny.
let's get the old napes out. And what's the B O U? Napes wants me to uh, change my password. See if I can get the meta from somewhere else. And to answer that question, the answer would be no. That's going to be runway 14 or something like that again. All of these uh, airports have the same, uh, same runway heading. 3214 everywhere. But yeah, it's going to be uh, runway 14. Birdsville was the odd one out. Yeah. And it's about time to start heading down. Another five miles out. Cool. Yes, and that's the road. The road to Bullia. And eventually Mount Isa. So looking at where we're going uh, next week from Bullia. I'm um, thinking about hitting the monument here, which is a mining site. And then we're going to head off to Cloncurry. Uh, so Mount Isa is just over there, and I reckon we can probably sneak in and fly over Mount Isa and then make the 57 mile journey out to Cloncurry where we'll land pick up from fuel at Cloncurry and then uh, off to Richmond and then from Richmond we're going to do this massive huge journey over here all the way back to the coast uh, flying over Hewenden because there's no scenery there for it so we'll just fly straight over it there is default scenery but you know after being spoiled by all these wonderful airports out at Concurry and Richmond and Bullio and the Monument, you won't want to. Well, let's head down. Looking for 15. 15 on the manifold. Set. Coast to coast road trip in Australia. You know what? I have a friend of mine that keeps talking about it. I'm not sure if it all talk. But let's just say that I have 10 years worth of uh, long service leave that will be due to me in about uh, four to five months time. Now I'm not thinking I'll uh, jump off and use it all up then. But, but, I'm wondering if it's uh, probably better to do uh, coast to coast or right around. You know what? There is something to be said for right around. What about a bit of both? Um, start off in Melbourne, track down the Great Ocean Road up to Adelaide, and then inland to The Rock, Uluru, and then out to Perth and then perhaps even further up from Perth. Or perhaps uh, the coastal road 
from Perth. So you track down to Kalgoorlie and then go directly south down to about Esperance and then around Margaret River. Denmark map. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. That'll work. And at that point you dump the car and then fly home. <laughs> so I'm not sure if you do it in a higher car or a car that you're trying to sell or something that you're just going to send to the scrap heap at the end of the journey. I guess you could ship the car back by a train. That could cost a bit though. And you could rent a bomb, but if you're driving in the middle of Australia, you really need that air conditioning going. And uh, if you have an old rental car without the air conditioning running, no, that's not going to be a fun trip at all. Yeah, you would need to be well supplied, but that said, the uh, Nullbore Plain Road is actually pretty good, apparently. It's a very well-travelled road. There's lots of uh, good stops along the way, apparently. They're pretty far in between. You have to do, like, 10-hour drives between each stop, but you can get there. There's road houses that sell food and water and fuel. And as I said, about 10 hours between each uh, major stop. So you can do it. You can do it in a standard sedan. Probably wouldn't really want to do it alone, but you wouldn't die. Fourteen miles out. And I'm doing a downward entry into the runway 14. Circuit entry at time zero zero. Just to say, driving coast to coast would be a lot easier than driving to Baduri. <laughs> Baduri would be a bit much. Oh, there's that grass plain that we're talking about with the cattle. Cool. Track Baduri, uh, Delta Oscar Echo is a uh, Piper Comanche. We are passing uh, 3,500 at uh, 11 miles south of Baduri Airfield. Estimating circuit time zero zero traffic for doing. Ten miles. Pretty sure I've got the township inside. Yep. Don't know the runway yet. I thought it was going to be closer to the township than that. Could be that thing.
six miles out. Let the speed lead away. Push up the um, 17, there we go. Commercial airliners do the calls that we're doing. Even at Mount Isa, which actually gets 717 aeroplanes out there. Uh, but do we really only get the Rex uh, Sub SF 340? And they'll also make the standard calls like us, and they'd hear us, and we'd hear them. And we'd coordinate or stay away from the airfield if they were on final approach, because they'd be doing an RNAV GPS approach, and they'd call the final at 15 miles out. Our requirement for our aeroplane is to be uh, 500 above circuit height, 10 miles out, and make the call about uh, just before entering, so 13, 15 miles away. Pull the parts off. And of course, they're coming in from over here somewhere. So we're going to have to turn to get onto the uh, final approach course, pass through the course, and then turn. We don't have a runway here. I'm going to do that. Up oh, there it is. Got it. Runway's inside. So yeah, there's no air traffic control here below 18,000 feet, I believe it was. Just off the charts. You see a low level. Yep, there it is, 18,000. So the lowest controller is 18,000 feet. If you're at 17,000 feet, the controller can't necessarily even see you. It certainly doesn't want to control you. They might be able to see you off the ADS-B. Traffic Bullier, Delta Oscar Echo is crossing the satellite runway uh, 14. We'll join the downwind of runway 14. Traffic uh, Bullier. Alright, now it's time to descend into the circuit altitude. Which is 1,300. 1,500, sorry. Okay, we're lined up for the runway. Traffic Bullia, Delta Oscar Echo is downwind runway 14. And let's get the gear now. Gear green. And I'm inside the wide arc so I can take out a stage of flap. Drop is fully forward, mixture is fully rich. Let's do the full landing checklist. Brakes are released, undercarriage is down, mixture is fully rich. Uh, prop is full forward. Fuel showing 15 gallon at each tank. Fuel, seats and harnesses are secure. Traffic Brillia, Delta Oscar Echo, turning uh, uh, base runway one four. Yeah, this is all visual stuff. Even if you're IFR, it's still going to be visual, visual approach. Which means you see and avoid. If you can see the airplane in front of you, you make sure you stay behind them or go around. Traffic Bullia, 
That's Roscoe Echo turning final on runway one four. And there's the rest of the flap. Brakes. Okay, I'll call the final. There's 80 knots, looking for 75. And we have it. Oh, someone's on the field. There's the town water tower. There's an RPM. Los Angeles chapter. Who knows? Seems a bit of a quiet town for that. Not much money to be had out here. Unless they sell beef. Traffic bully uh, Delta Oscar Echo vacated runway 14. Tip clearing. That was pretty damn close. Yep, just made it. Had to come off the center line to get there. Ah, there's the fuel bowsers. Oh, it's a BP one as well. Good stuff. Yeah, I know how to use those. That's cool. the Rex plane park right there? Yeah, it would. I might push our tail off to there. Um, or do we literally have to go back here? That might be the best option. push ourselves around so it's easy to push us back in between these two. Again, don't want to touch the wingtip. About there seems right. Thousand RPM breaks are in. Shut down the avions. Cooper, how you doing? 
Just jumping in towards the end of the stream. We'll shut down the engine. Ah, that's a Cessna Conquest or something. Battery off. And let's jump on out. Yeah, hit and take off, <laughs> run away. Yeah, that'll fit back there. Let's get all the people out of here. We can even put some fuel in it from the Bowser when we, uh, should we do that now? Nah, we'll do it when we leave. That's fine. Yeah, the world fight was pretty cool. I did heaps of hours. I'll have to re revisit that again. But next year I'll probably be on a crew again, so I won't be actually for live streaming. Apart from some Facebook off the phone. Ah, that's a live aeroplane. Cool. Anyhow, what I'm going to do is push this aeroplane back to in between those two. And to do that... How do I do it? There we go. So, live towing mode. And we push. Yes, that works. Push forward to make the plane go back faster. And you can steer it left and right with the yoke. put it almost to the grass well not really grass here is it it's more dirt and we can turn off the tower right we emptied the plane we put the uh, actually before we emptied the plane I want to chuck in the uh, control lock there it is Empty the aircraft, put the tie downs in, and door is closed. They're open again, and <laughs> closed again. Got the pit cover on, control locks, tie downs area. Cool. Alrighty, so here we are at uh, Bullia. I see Sam uh, Sean has given me an 8 out of 10 for that last landing. Again, slightly off the center line, but the actual touchdown is very nice. So, that's our journey uh, for tonight. Next week sometime, probably another Wednesday, uh, we'll drop out of Boulia, head up to the monument, uh, fly over Mount Isa, and uh, touch down in Cloncurry. Now, uh, the reason I want to fly over Mount Isa and not land there is because for the uh, full world tour that I'm doing, uh, the intention is actually to come back to Mount Isa after visiting the coastline again. So, we can see this area here where they're really close together. 
We are currently here at Bullia. We'll touch down on land at the monument, fly over Mount Isa and then hit Cloncurry. After we leave Cloncurry we're going to hit Richmond, then uh, Mackay, uh, Hamilton Island, Townsville, uh, Mariba, Cairns, all the way up here past um, Cookton up to Lockhart River, do the Torres Strait Islands, hit Weeper, Weeper, sorry, and uh, Pomparoo, Karumba, uh, from Karumba hit, uh, what's that place, Dumaji, Century Mine, and then back into uh, Mount Isa again. Sean saying that the flare was nice at that time. I do agree. It looks pretty cool. Anyhow, that's a uh, preview of the future of the uh, World Tour, or the Grand Tour of Australia. I do hope you've enjoyed this little segment. As a Piper Cherokee goes blasting off to the runways. Anyway, I've been Mr. Aviator, and I'll see you guys next time. Probably see you at... Um, Friday Night Ops, wherever that happens to be this week. Till then, ciao for now.